What's up, y'all? Man, it's been, I was trying to remember, Japan was our last concert together. Yep. Like Tokyo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is, yeah. wow. Well, I, actually, I guess it was uh, Brooklyn. Yeah. Right? The US. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's good to see you both. <laughs> what up, bro? <laughs> I watched the... I watched both sets of the SF Jazz concert. Crazy. And this is probably the first time I was just telling Marcus ever that I chose the first set over the second set. Mm. Like, usually the second set obviously is better, you know what I mean? Because there's more. But for some reason, I don't know if it was the audience. I don't know if it was like, like who was in the audience. I know you, Anissa, you had a lot of fans there that night. Mm-hmm. If you were hyped. There was such an energy. Um, and I think people just like came together to celebrate Bill and also to celebrate you, really, because it was like yep. a big appearance, you know, big energy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It was a good day. It was it was a beautiful day for sure, man. That was that was a hot night, man. <laughs> it, was hot. it was pretty crazy. Yeah. Like, you know, to go back and, and think about it, actually, it was one of the last shows we did before Bill passed too. Mm. Um which is kind of wild, you know, I'm glad we were able to give him his flowers, you know, yeah. while he was oh, yeah, still here. Mm-hmm. around. And Marcus, you actually met him. Yeah, yeah, I met him. Know, before I did, you know, what was that like? Man, that was, that's Grandpa Bill, man. He just tell you like how it is. First time I met him, we had did a tribute for him in um, Amsterdam. And it was like the first time that he ever came out to any tribute show that anybody did for him. And I never forget it. Like, you know, we had like a 10 piece orchestra, it was a lot mm-hmm. of different acts and they had him right in the front. So where he was sitting at, he was like looking directly at me the whole time. So I'm like, man, but we're playing like all the cuts. So like in the middle of the show, I see him kind of get up in, in the middle of the show and he goes, and I guess he went to go use the bathroom. So like right before the last song, I go backstage and, you know, waiting for the encore and somebody taps me on the shoulder and he goes, man, you know what? He goes, All those songs that you, you guys play, I don't really remember. And I'm like, what? I'm like, aren't you supposed to be outside? And that was just like, that was the type of person he was. He was just super genuine, really like, you know, down to earth. And, you know, after the show, we hanged out and just tell me a whole bunch of stories and stuff. But mm. person, man, really good person. But just the fact that, after all of that and then you know to come back and do a tour and you know us last year just paying homage to him is you know it was crazy it was really it's like a full circle you know coming back from all that yeah man it's crazy to think about how many shows we did last year especially now obviously like you know pandemic election day today you know we're in a very different uh mindset right 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 we did just back to back to back to back to back to back to back shows um I think this was, I don't know, this might have been the, one of the dopest ones. There yeah. was some energy around it. You know, SF Jazz is incredible. You know, um, that's where I met Anissa. Yeah. So that was really special, too. Mm-hmm. I actually talk about it in the concert. Yeah, I was a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Anissa's homecoming. Yeah. So, like, she's like, y'all. Yeah, like, we met, <laughs> we met actually because SF Jazz called me because you were doing the feature concert with Christian Bride's big band. And Chris McBride wanted like a walk-on bass player. And then the director of education at SF Jazz, Rebecca Malion, she called me like, hey, he wants a bass player, like come through. And I was with my friends and I just like dropped everything and I just got dressed and pulled up. And then you were there and like you guys killed you the set. So you said what? Yeah, they called me they called you on the like, Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, the show was at seven. They called me like four o'clock. Wow. And I just dropped everything I was doing and just pulled up. And I could barely find parking. I remember everything. And then... um. Yeah, and then you 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 killed. That was my first time. Well, that was my second time seeing you live. Um, but you guys killed it, and uh, I still have that picture, the red suit. Wow, I had no idea because I thought it was all like worked out forever. Because the way he introduced you, I was like, oh man, this is like his new thing. And he came out. You were playing, swinging, and he came out all gangster. And I was like, man, I, just, <laughs> I, I need somebody to like come out and like sing me on stage. Like that's the level. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. right, right. That was what he wanted, exactly. That's funny. But yeah, what was it like for you, you know, doing the hometown show? Like, what was your experience? Um, you know, Bill Withers um, 
just I feel like you know just his legacy obviously is just it's it's, it's unparamount. It's just it's incredible, you know. Um, especially like you know a song like Lean on Me, which got you know on tour with you, like that was just such a huge moment. Mm-hmm. Every show, you know, doing Lean on Me, you know, and like you know right now I remember you would say you know you would talk about how you know. <sighs> It's, it's so many things that come to mind, but on um, that show in San Francisco, to come home and do Bill Withers at SF Jazz, which is like, you know, a huge part of my coming up, you know, I was there as an alumni and high school, all-star and all that stuff. But like, to do that with Jose James, who I had met, like the whole thing was like through SF Jazz. Like they mm-hmm. called me to do it. That's how I met you. Then we got on tour later. And it was just, it was, it, it felt like, you know, I was growing up, you know, like a, you know, celebration party. You know? Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to see the video. Man, it's crazy. And and watching it too, I mean, we all know this, but like I was struck again by how unquestionably black his music is. You know what I mean? And and country, you know, in a very specific way. And I feel like he was such a trailblazer because he was able to bring that kind of you know, Southern black poetry, really that rural wisdom, you know what I mean? To songwriting in a different way that had never really, like if you think about him versus like Stevie Wonder, for example, Mm -hmm. Stevie's stuff is very urban. You know, it's very like global. Um, Bill's stuff is, you know, put your foot on the rock and put your foot down and stop, you know? And I I just wanted to see what you guys, if you had any thoughts about kind of that you know we never really talked about it It was just kind of like understood like we know it's bill withers but for maybe people who are going to watch this concert like what was your feeling about that you know what i mean man the film was it was crazy because it was like besides from us touring and just playing this incredible incredible music it was like everybody was locked in and it's like you know growing up on all of his records, but it wasn't until when I actually start playing the music that you really start tapping into some different frequencies. It was like, wow, it's like, I knew what he was saying, but it's like, it's very powerful stuff. And, you know, there's so much records and catalogs and, you know, it's just like, it just, it's like every generation just kept, you know, and I feel like with this concert and just the tour in general, it was like, it was kind of like different generations. So if you was young, our age, older, you know, you've never heard of Bill Withers, you'll, you'll kind of take away something from this concert and, you know, everything that, you know, what Bill brought to the whole, you know, music, you know what I mean? It's, it's very deep, it's very deep. And just the fact too, like you had mentioned a lot of things that the reason why that you wanted to do this type of uh, tour and also to this project, because a lot of people thought for a long time that he wasn't around, that he had died. Mm. And just the fact exactly. that bringing this music back, you know, mm. to the forefront, and you know us interpreting his music it just opened up a lot of eyes to a lot of older people and young people too as well so that's my take on it mm. Lisa what do you think um I like what you said about the countryness because like even you know if to use Stevie Wonder as a comparison you know somebody from you know Detroit or some like some more urban but it was also like I feel it had like a, a more like sophistication, a little more advanced, you know what I mean? Kind of thing. But like just the groove, repetitive bass lines, like, you know, like a lot of Bill Withers music, you know, playing it is just, it's straight bass lines. Like it's not like mm-hmm. changes where you can do all this cool stuff. I mean, you can obviously, right? but like in order to really get that authentic feeling of the music that makes people want to dance, that was such a powerful impact on these festivals all over the world that made people stand up on their feet, like, mm-hmm. You know, to see that impact, you know, the simplicity of his music, I feel, is what makes it, you know, unquestionably just dance. It just, it just triggers something in mm. your body. You can't sit still. You know, you have to sing along yeah. because it's just so human. It's not, he's not trying to impress you. He's not trying to wear you down with all these chord progressions. It's just, you know, and like you said, the way, like, I learned so much about him just from the stories you told on tour about like how he just started, you know, he had a simple life. He was, he had a a blue collar type of worker who picked up a guitar and a piano one day and then 
lean on me. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. You know, just like mm-hmm. it's it's in, it's intuitive music. Like the yeah. music goes where your mind thinks it should go, mm-hmm. and it's not a disappointment. You know. Right. Yeah. Well said. That's that's deep, man. Mm-hmm. Well, shout out to Aaron Steele on the drums, holding down that Ew. that very difficult funk drum chair, man. Uh, he was sweating every night. <laughs> <laughs> every night and it made it worse because there was a drum solo remember in between as you do the costume change so it was just five minutes of just solo drums um and then Takeshi Obayashi is on the keys sensei Sensei. yeah he's over in in Japan he's been he's been stuck in Japan since December wow yeah yeah so you know this is this was a global thing this was unquestionably black and also global uh, I think that's how we did it. So yeah, man, I hope y'all, damn, everybody in watching enjoys and, and just know, you know, like how much, I think we all believed in the project, you know, like Anissa said, every time we did Lean On Me, which, you know, you sang on as well, you can't sing Lean On Me, you can't perform that song without believing it. It's right. like a prayer, really. It's like a, it's like a call to action on a spiritual level. And you can't be like, you know, in a bad mood, kind of, you know, lean on me or whatever. <laughs> like, it's like every night was like, night, yo. let's go, you know, and people, you're right, people really responded and would sing. Um, and for me, you know, like as a, as a songwriter and a still aspiring songwriter, my hope is to write anything that comes like close to any of that in my lifetime. You know, nothing I've written has touched that, you know, and, and he set the bar, you know, to me. And that's why I think we wanted to pay homage to him because, you know, when you talk about the greats, you know, you know, Paul Simon and, um, you know, Stevie and, you know, all of these, you know, incredible songwriters, his name often gets left off that list. Um, and my question was always like, why? And I think it's because he didn't play the game. But now that he's gone, even more so, I think we should, have a moment to look at his legacy and know that he's right up there, you know, with McCartney and all the best songwriters of all time. He's, he's right there. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And, and, you know, I want to shout out to you, you know, Jose, for taking it upon yourself to give, to give this man his flowers while he was still living, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And really go on tour for not a year, but two years, like, to dedicate so much of your career to honoring another man's legacy. It just shows your humility and your, you know, commitment to the art form itself. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, you killed it. It was great. It was a great experience. Appreciate y'all, man. Well, um, you know, I want to let the people know what they can, what they can expect from you guys. <clears throat> what have you been up to, you know, in this pandemic? Like what's coming up? I know you both been busy. Yeah, and it's just trying to keep the lights on out here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, besides from that, just a lot of different projects, a lot of new music, a lot of different uh, stuff coming out. And yeah, you know, just taking it one day at a time. And, you know, for health, health first, that's the main thing, you know what I mean? True. Just make sure everybody's healthy first. And uh, yeah, just been working on a lot of, a lot of new stuff. My album is wrapping up pretty nicely. So looking out to put that out soon, or probably top of the year. Incredible. Um, yeah, me and my sister, we have a project, production project that came out a couple months ago and so on and so forth. But Anissa, you take it, you take it. Wait, 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 where can people find you, man? Come on. Uh, official Marcus Machado at Instagram or go to right. Marcus Machado website, uh, Marcus Machado on iTunes and yeah, see if you like it. Go from there. <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing. See, I've been doing some cool stuff. Y'all got some videos coming out. Yeah, a lot, a lot of protest music, right? Yeah, Mark Seven music. Uh, got a project with Pete Rock and the Soul Brothers. It's like a super group. So it's like myself, Mono Neon, Darby Jones, Jermaine Holmes, and it's another hip hop rock project with Feral Monts that's coming out on November 11th. A track called Fight featuring Cypress Hill. So yeah, a lot of different. A lot of different genres and stuff. And also too, yeah, I have a, a new single that's out right now called Shape Shift featuring uh, Jay Swiss and R.L. Lumsey. And yeah, just talking about, you know, the state of the world that we in, and, you know, keeping it moving, man. 
music mm-hmm. people, you know, that's what it is. <laughs> yep. Anissa, what you got? What you got? Uh, what do I have? I'm working on uh, actually a, a festival, like a live stream event with like a bunch of artists. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're, we're filming coming up. It's, it's in the works. So um, nothing to announce about that yet, but soon. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just follow. I have some things coming up. So just follow me on Anissa Strings everywhere, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Anissa Strings, website, AnissaStrings.com and just stay tuned. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and with SF Jazz, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm in the collective now, thankfully, that's, that's, that's a dream come true. They actually asked me the night of that show. Y'all so, y'all so bashful, show. man, you're like, nothing's going on. <laughs> We're good. You know, Cypress Hill, Faramont, I'm in the SF Jazz Collective, you know, it's kind of a dream come true, whatever. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> yeah, man, it's cool, man. Like I said, the night, the night of this show, is when is when is when uh I they they asked me so it's actually this is like really full circle so wow yeah man wow. yeah wow. yeah congrats yeah. everybody at home yeah, Bravo. <laughs> right there. yeah what about you Jose what you working on oh I am uh I'm writing I'm doing this project called 1978 which I mentioned you guys on tour I realized I've been working on it for three years now mm. which is crazy. And uh, yeah, just trying to stay focused, keep my warm ups and yeah. and play a little bit, you know, and and keep uh, keep my eye on the prize and make sure people vote as well, you know. So we've been we've been doing all of that. Um, but yeah, Rainbow Blonde Records, we've been putting out music. It's it's been great, and uh, yeah, live album coming out next year, double live album. Uh, my first live album so you know we'll see if people like it <laughs> yeah. but yeah just really trying to stay you know focused on on music and and finding ways like as of jazz have t- to keep giving music fans and music community you know something you know and and keep giving back and keeping people inspired um so you know salute to as of jazz for this series every friday you can see an amazing band like this one you know <laughs> um it's awesome you know so in these in through these dark times organizations like sm jazz have really continued to hit the high mark with supporting this you know uniquely american art form called jazz facts facts awesome all right y'all well peace and love thank you for joining me on this thank and uh, thank let you the people watch the that's the concert yeah Rest in peace, Bill Withers. <laughs>